हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो माय सेल्फ एन वी पाटिल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ के के वाग इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी व्हाट इज मीन बाय सी एस टी एलिमेंट एंड ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व वन शेप फंक्शन न्यूमेरिकल द थ्री नोडेड ट्रैंगुलर एलिमेंट इज कॉमनली कॉल्ड एज अ कॉन्स्टेंट स्ट्रेंट ट्रैंगल दैट इज सी एस टी द शेप ऑफ दिस एलिमेंट इज ट्रैंगुलर एंड ऑल्सो वी आर हैविंग थ्री नोड as well as the strain is constant within the element so that's why it is called as a constant strain triangle that is cst it is also called as a linear triangle this is the very earliest and simplest element used for solving the 2d problems like plane stress plane strain and axisymmetric type the node numbers for this element is giving in anti clockwise direction node 1 having coordinate x1 y1 node 2 having coordinates x2 y2 and node 3 having coordinates x3 y3 this element is having two degrees of freedom at each node that is it can be displaced in x and y direction the x displacement will be denoted as a u and y displacement is denoted as v that's why the displacement at node 1 will be denoted as u1 v1 at node 2 will be denoted as u2 v2 and at node 3 it will be denoted as u3 and v3 Thus, in general, for one element, we are having three number of nodes, two degrees of freedom per node. That means there are total six degrees of freedom, and we are having three shape functions, which are denoted as n1, n2, and n3. This element can be used where the strain gradients are very small. We can't use this element where the stress concentration occurs, that is at the edges of holes and also at the corners. In general, the CST element is not recommended for general analysis purpose, as very large number of elements are required to achieve the desired accuracy. For this CST element, by using the FA techniques, we will be get the properties at node number one, node number two, and node number three. But if we want to find the any properties within the element, then we have to use the shape function or interpolation function. Now let's consider a point P having coordinates x and y, and at this point we have to find the properties. The property is maybe a stress, maybe strain, maybe displacement, maybe coordinates, or maybe a temperature. So these properties we can find at this point using the shape function, which is given as the property is equal to n1 P R1. that is a property 1 plus n2 property 2 plus n3 property 3 where this n1 n2 and n3 are the shape functions and this pr1 pr2 and pr3 are the properties at node number 1 2 and 3 respectively so this is any generalized property these properties 1 2 and 3 we are known for this nodal point and we have to find out the shape function n1 n2 and n3 this shape function can be find out using two ways one is the using area coordinates and second one using the natural coordinates so using natural coordinates the shape function n1 is given as xi n2 is given as neta and as n1 plus n2 plus n3 are one so n3 we can calculate it as 1 minus eta minus neta and the second way using the area coordinates so using area coordinates the shape function n1 <coughs> is given as a1 by a n2 is a2 by a and n3 is a3 by a where a1 a2 a3 are the areas of triangle and a is the area of this total triangular element so to find out the areas of a1 a2 and a3 we are dividing uh, this element again into three parts so by joining the line from 1 to point p again 2 to point p and 3 to point p so we'll be get this uh, element will be get divided into three areas the area in front of node 1 will be denoted as a1 the area in front of node 2 will be denoted as a2 and the area in front of node 3 will be denoted as a3 so using this area coordinates the shape function can be find out as n1 is equal to a1 by a n2 is a2 by a and n3 is equal to a3 by a the a is the total area of the element and to find this total area we have to use this formula that is 1 half then determinant of 1 x1 y1 1 x2 y2 1 x3 y3 where x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 are the coordinates of node number 1 2 and 3 as we are considering this node numbers in anti clockwise direction so using similar fashion the area of this triangle a1 will be find out by considering the points p 
2 and 3. So, we will be get the a1 area as 1 half 1 xy, x2 y2 and x3 y3, where xy are the coordinates of point P and then x2 y2 and x3 y3 are the coordinates of node number 2 and 3. Similar fashion for calculating the area of a2, we have to consider the first point as a P and then go in anti-clockwise direction. So, P, 3 and 1. So, using these coordinates, A2 will be calculated as 1 xy, 1 x3 y3, 1 x1 y1. And similar fashion to find out the area of this triangle A3, we have to again consider point P first and then in anticlockwise direction 1 and 2. So, A3 will be calculated as 1 xy, 1 x1 y1, 1 x2 y2. So, using these two ways, you can able to find any properties within the element very easily. This properties is maybe a stress, maybe strain, maybe temperature or maybe a coordinate point. Now, let us solve one numerical using both the condition that is natural coordinate and area coordinates. So, let us consider this problem, the CST element which is defined by the nodes. Node number 1 is denoted as 24, 30, node 2 having coordinates 60, 20 and node 3 having coordinates 90, 50. The stresses at this node 1, 2 and 3 are given as 90, 120 and 160 megapascal respectively and we have to find the stress at this point P which is located as 60, 30. So, first of all we are going to find out the stresses at point P using the area coordinates and for this purpose first we are going to write all the given data that is the coordinates of node number 1, 2, 3 and coordinates of point P. and also the stresses at uh, node number 1, 2 and 3 which are given we have to write as it is and now we have to find the stress at point P. So, stress is one of the properties that is the stress at point P is calculated using the shape function as n1 sigma 1 plus n2 sigma 2 plus n3 sigma 3. Now, sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are known to us we have to find the shape function n1, n2 and n3 here we are going to find this shape function using the area coordinates which is given as n1 is a1 by a, n2 is a2 by a and n3 is a3 by a. So, to find this areas we have to divide this triangular element again into three parts by joining the line with node 1 to p, 2 to p and 3 to p and giving the area numbers in front of each node as so, in front of node 1 will be a1, in front of node 2 will be a2 and in front of node 3 is a3. To calculate the area of this total element, we have to use this formula 1 half determinant of 1 x1 y1, 1 x2 y2, 1 x3 y3, where this x1 y1, x2 y2, x3 y3 are the coordinates of node 1, 2 and 3. So, by putting these values and finding the determinant and multiplying it by 1 half, we will be get the area of triangle. as 690 and similar fashion we have to find the area a1, a2 and a3. So, for a1 we have to consider point P then 2 and node number 3. So, by putting these values and by solving we will be get the area as 150. To find out the area of a2 we have to consider point P node number 3 and node number 1 and by putting this coordinates value and solving we will be get the value as a 360. And for area A3, we have to consider point P1 and node number 2. And putting these values and by solving, we will get the values as a 180. Now, as we get all these areas, you can cross check this A1, A2 and A3 values as the total area is equal to the summation of A1 plus A2 plus A3. Now, we have to find the shape function N1 which is given as A1 by A. So, 150 by 690 will be get as a point 2173. Then N2 is A2 by A. So, 360 by 690 will be get as a point 5217. And N3 is A3 by A. So, 180 by 690 will be get as a value as a point 2608. So, in this way you can able to calculate the shape function using area coordinates and now we have to find the stress at point P using this shape function formula. So, by putting this shape function values and the stresses at the respective node points by and by solving we will be get the value as a 123.88 megapascal. So, in this way you can able to calculate the 
stress or any property within that element by using this shape function and the shape function can be calculated using the area coordinate now let's solve the same numerical using the natural coordinates so let's consider the same numerical we have to find out the stress again using the shape function the stresses at node points are given so we have to find the stress at point p the shape function we are going to find out using the natural coordinates so using natural coordinates n1 is given as a xi n2 is nita and n3 is 1 minus xi minus nita now using the isoparametric formulation we have to find out this natural coordinates that is xi nita use the isoparametric formulation using this same property formula we can find out the coordinates at point p that is x and y so x coordinate will be written as n1 x1 plus n2 x2 plus n3 x3 and the y coordinates of point p will be written as n1 y1 plus n2 y2 plus n3 y3 here n1 n2 n3 are unknown to us but we know that n1 n2 and n3 value as a in terms of natural coordinates so by replacing these values will be get this new equation similar fashion for y coordinates and now simplifying these equations will be get the x coordinate as x1 minus x3 is high plus x2 minus x3 into nita plus x3 similarly for y coordinates y1 minus y3 into xi plus y2 minus y3 into nita plus y3 as we know the x1 x2 x3 and y1 y2 y3 coordinates so putting these values in this <coughs> equation and similarly for y coordinates and by simplifying we'll be get the first equation as 66 xi plus 30 nita is equal to 30 and the second equation is 26 xi plus 30 nita is equal to 20 now we have to solve these two equations so by solving these two equation we can easily get the values of xi and nita so by solving we will be get the value of xi as 0.2173 and nita value as a 0.5217 as we know that the n1 is equal to xi n2 is equal to nita and n3 is equal to 1 minus xi minus nita so by using this formulation we can able to write the shape function n1 n2 and n3 so this shape function we will be get as the same as we get using the area coordinates also now using this shape function value we have to put these values in this uh, to find the stress at point p so writing the equation and putting these values and by calculating so the stresses at point p will be get as 123.92 megapascal which is almost same as whatever the stresses we calculated using the area coordinates so in this way you can able to find out the stresses or any properties within the element using area coordinates or natural coordinates you can use any one of the method which is convenient for you such numericals may be asked in SPP examination for 6 or 8 marks and I hope you will be able to solve such types of numerical I hope you like this video thank you for watching have a nice day